Okay, welcome to the channel. This is going to be our first uh, proper project on the channel. This is going to be um, our new camper van conversion. Um, there's a little bit of damage on the front. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, I apologise for all the birds. They seem to be uh, a bit noisy tonight, but uh, we'll try and get through this now. Right, so this is a MAN TGE, which is the commercial version of the Volkswagen Crafter. MAN is the commercial version, sorry, the commercial division of Volkswagen. And this is their light commercial vehicle. So this is essentially exactly the same van as the Crafter. It's just badged up as MAN. Okay, uh, we'll look at the major damage in a second, but... Um, driver's side first this is uh, undamaged other than uh, the odd mark here and there so this headlight is all okay all the tabs are okay slight scrape on this corner but um, that should polish out wings all good uh, this bracket's broken for the uh, bumper mount and this tab is bent here but that shouldn't be a problem Right, these wheels, this is being a heavy duty one, this is a six lug steel wheel, so there won't be any flash out of wheels on this one, unfortunately. Uh, this is a 5 ton, 180 horsepower MAN TGE, so uh, wheel, uh, alloy wheels wouldn't be uh, load rated high enough for this van. Um, the driver's door is all okay, apart from a slight dent here. Whether or not we do that or not, I don't know. Um, some scraping on the mirrors. Probably where it's been brushing past bits and pieces while it's driving. But all works okay. The centre panel is all good. No dings, no dents. Just a bit of uh, residue from where it was uh, stickered up as a company van. So that should clean off no problem. Going on to the rear quarter, so the rear panel has a dent up here where it's scraped on along something. Again, not a major issue, that one should, most of it should push out, fill and paint that okay, fine up there. The rest of the panel's nice and straight, apart from this piece down here. So there's a dent here, again, where it's caught something. Most of it will probably be under this plastic panel, we'll pop this off and uh, Straighten that out and paint it. Now, being a five-ton van, this has twin rear axle. Sorry, a twin wheel rear axle. Um, it's rear-wheel drive. And most of these vans are front-wheel drive. And this is actually quite a rare spec. Um, it can carry, I believe, five tons, and it can tow three and a half tons, and have a gross train weight of eight tons. So. No problem with uh, doing a camper conversion on this because you have plenty of weight to spare. I know with the front wheel drive ones, um, you're pretty much on the limit by the time you've done a conversion and put your camping gear in, then uh, it doesn't leave very much uh, to play with. The rest of this is all okay. The plastics are all good. All okay, the rear light's fine. Rear corner panel is all good. Rear doors. Need some realignment, the plastic trim's coming away there. The um, Although they look fairly good for a worksman, obviously it's a slight dent there. The, um, the doors themselves aren't in great condition. This door is the driver's side, has pretty um, Pretty bad at the bottom end. It's not too badly dented, and most of it should paint. I'm not sure why there's a big chunk of silicon on this, but it's not really doing anything. The rear arch, sorry, the rear hinges, where they mount on the door, the door's all cracked. Again, this is quite a common problem on these vans, unfortunately, because the metal is quite thin, and where the door keeps getting open and closed and slammed shut, puts a lot of stress on these hinges. So this will need to be repaired. We'll take the door off, grind it back, flatten it out, weld it and reinforce it. Hopefully that'll be okay. 
pain in that it will have to be replaced but um, hopefully we'll get away without doing that uh, top hinge is okay nothing wrong with there although both hinges have been uh, manipulated <laughs> in the past to try and line them up by those things so they're um, in pretty poor condition really but the hinges themselves are okay it's just where they mount onto the door the other side it's pretty much the same story panels are battered the paintwork's all battered but the door is straight and no cracks on the hinge on this one so that's good that's all good. This used to be a builder's merchant's delivery van by looks things. Uh, the rear bumper is hanging off. And the reinforcement, this panel here, is broken and missing on that side. It looks like somebody stuck the fork straight through it and taken that out. So that will need to be replaced inside the van. Chuck a block full of rubbish. This is how it came. This is exactly how it came with us. All the bits and pieces. The ply lining isn't great shape. Haven't really had a good look at that yet, but it may or may not be able to be saved. Um, it's going to be covered anyway, but realistically, looking at it, it probably will be replaced. The bumper there is your is a replacement bumper that I bought ready for this van. It's a second hand one. Just stuck it in there for um for storage. Right, the rear wheel tubs are flattened basically. They sh should be nice and round. Uh, again, looks like whoever was uh putting these pallets in the back of here just put them on top of the uh arch light uh, arch covers and uh flattened them. So that's not really a major issue. They'll be uh, pushed back up, um, dollied into place, hammered dolly into place, um, sealed up, and they're going to be boxed in anyway, so they'll look okay when they're done. As long as they're sealed, it shouldn't really be a problem. The floor is in pretty bad shape and will probably be replaced. It's not in great shape at all. There's an awful lot of uh, concrete dust and cement and all sorts in it all over the van so that'll all be doing cleaning up but that'll be one of the first jobs is to clean all this out take up the flooring and uh, see what we got left so there's the doors okay then you come to the worst side so straight away this rear quarter a rear corner panel whatever you want to call it this is a couple of bad dents in it and a hole top of it looks okay this light looks like it's been replaced there is quite a big uh, gap so that will have to have some work this panel obviously be pulled out welded back up and that should be okay the plastics look okay down the bottom dent in this uh, bottom corner again fairly straightforward that I'll just should push out that wouldn't be any real issue. Again, with the twin wheels this side. This rear quarter is actually nice and straight, but where somebody's taken, I'm not sure if you can see this on there, where somebody's taken the stickers off, they've actually cut them off. And um, scored the paint actually quite deep in places. So um, that will have to be painted, although it doesn't need any filler. The sliding door has that dent there. Other than that, it's fairly straight. It looks pretty good up the top. However, the bottom end does stick out slightly. So whether or not that's something to do with that dent, I don't know. But we'll straighten the dent out, see if that kicks in. If not, we'll have a look, see if that can uh, be manipulated back into to, uh, where it should be. And the sill looks nice, so I don't think it's hit anything major. There. Coming to the driver's door. Down the bottom, that wall looks okay. Okay, 
and then there is a slight dent there that's obviously where it caught the damaged wing so that that'll just pull out and be filled this mirror again lots of scrapes on the mirror itself but the indicator has condensation in it so it looks like it's broken just here so that'll either have to be drilled eh, dried out or replaced probably uh, probably end up replacing just the indicator on that okay open the sliding door so yeah get the floor in pretty messy this whole van is very very dirty you see all the rubbish in here this is screws and cement and concrete and goodness knows what you're all in here most of this floor be cleaned out, the floor be burnt. That's the original wing off this side. And various other bits and pieces in here. The uh, broken headlight. Said ply lining, ply lining. Now the bulkhead is a bit unusual in this one. The bulkhead has this, um, it's called a pram bed. Um, it's for long distance uh, journeys and somewhere for the driver to have a nap basically let's have a look inside so the van has three front seats has electric windows the battery has been taken out and replaced this is not the right battery for this van this is just a small unit just to get it make sure it was running okay it starts up fine but obviously can't be run because has no uh, water in the radiators but the driver's seat I'm sorry the passenger seats are nice and clean apart from this bits and pieces stuck to them driver's seat has a fair bit of wear but it's a six-speed manual and it has the aircon which was important not a great stereo unfortunately but that can be changed as well Multifunction steering wheel, which is nice. Central locking, etc. Armrest for the driver. Filthy dirty. And this bed system basically has folds up flap when it's not in use. Has a curtain rail as well, which comes all the way around. And basically holds flat when you need it so it gives you a sleeping space this is a foam mattress this is padded and quilted and insulated so that's actually probably quite warm I would think up there and I've actually sold this on eBay once but uh, the buyer didn't complete the order so I'm going to have to relist this and get rid of it because I don't need it obviously the bulkhead will be coming out for the uh, camber conversion so that all has to go the van originally being a five-ton van had a tachograph this again was missing when I picked the van up not quite sure why I don't think anybody can use it but anything other than these I think they're specific to this van but that's where the wiring is for it the issue with this is the mileage isn't on the clocks when I put the ignition on the mileage doesn't come up on the clocks that was all on the taco taco being missing that will have to be coded out of the van because this is for private use I don't actually need a taco which is quite nice um, but I need to look into getting the taco coded out and hopefully that'll put the mileage back onto the normal clocks where it would normally be. Failing that, I'm not quite sure what to do with that. But um, hopefully we'll be able to sort that out. If anybody knows much about that, I know Vagcom will probably be needed for that. And... Uh, I'm not quite sure what's entailed, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to find somebody who does. So that's that. The flooring 
for here is in the back. That's the jack and everything's under there. This is a, a loom I bought ready for the front. So that's all good. So the main part of the damage is going to be this front corner. And that's the near side front corner for us in uh, Britain. Because we are um, we are left, uh, right hand drive cars. Most cars in Europe will be left hand drive. So the engine is a 2 litre twin turbo 170 horsepower unit. And you can actually see um, the turbos down here. One there, it's the inlet, and then the second one's down there. Stuck this piece of wood on here because the uh, bonnet stay isn't actually attached to anything on this side. So, damage wise, headlight is all good, and then pretty much everything else needs to be replaced. The um, right, this is the air conditioning condenser. This doesn't look too bad. It was hit fairly low and missed the bottom of this, but it is bent. Uh, this pipe has broken off, but I've got a replacement condenser. This may actually be okay, but I've bought um, a new condenser anyway because being slightly bent, it'll still rub against the um, radiators. The radiators, and there is two of them, one there and one there. Uh, there's low pressure and a high pressure radiator. They're obviously both knackered, both broken. The um, no water in the header tank. So that plastic here is the mount for the radiators. This is a big panel that goes all the way around the radiators, and it's damaged in several places. This bumper bracket is obviously. No good, that's all bent. But luckily, the damage missed the chassis leg. The chassis leg itself is completely straight. Missed it completely. Um, this bottom arm has been replaced already. The uh, guy I bought it off already replaced that. But unfortunately, the subframe is bent. I have a replacement subframe ready to go on this. So that will have to be bent and then hopefully that will bring the wheel back where it should be. So the primary damage is these three panels here. There's the inner wing. This is like a box section piece that comes down the wrong side of the inner wing. And then that panel there is the cover for the wheel arch. So not too badly damaged. The wiring is generally all okay. That's an earth. That's the wires for the headlights. This wire is that one inside that um, the replacement loom I've got. That will just be plugged into the new one. This is the only piece of damaged wiring here. And that actually is this wire here, which obviously got clamped or cut off in the accident. So that will have to be rejoined and hopefully we can sort that out. Again, not too bad. This auxiliary water pump here, that uh, connector has come off there, so that will need to be replaced. This connector here is um, an airbag sensor, which is up in here. There's two of these, there's one either side, but obviously this one is broken. This is part of the bracket for the ECU, which sits on a bigger bracket. Here, once the inner wing is repaired. This aircon pipe is um, basically goes down, follows the inner wing, and then up along the bulkhead. And basically into the back of the engine bay. Um, which will be fun to replace, I've got to be honest, but Hopefully I'll be able to remove this uh, air intake pipe and once the front panel and radiators are all out the way this should be a lot easier to get to anyway. 
the skull panel is damaged fortunately that's uh, taken that out and the bonnet has been pushed back and it looks like where people have been opening it it has broken the windscreen as well so the windscreen will need replacing the bonnet needs replacing this hinge inner wings the whole structure for the um, radiators the bumper bracket itself and then bumpers grill all these doing but generally not too bad once these three panels are once these three panels are um, replaced everything else is pretty much bolt on and should be fairly straightforward arch liners on both sides are um, broken this one is where the album was bent it's got pushed back into the arch this plastic trim is broken this arch panel um, sorry this um, the mount that's a wing mount these wing mounts are bent that one's come away it's got a broken up spot weld on that so they'll need straightening out welding back on this one needs straightening out I think that one and this one will be replaced take the um, front strut off um, make sure that's all straight and not bent because if the strut's bent it won't actually move as it's supposed to but hopefully that looks okay it may be replaced anyway because it's uh, done a few miles now when I bought the van um, the guy who bought it off or the advert read it was 66,000 miles since um, since I advertised the bed basically on eBay I've been in touch with a company who used to own the van and it's more likely that it's done 130,000 miles we went over shore until we get the mileage from the computer but obviously it's a, it's a fair bit more than what it was advertised at but not a lot I can do about that now so that's the basic um, overall view of the van this is going to be a fairly big project for me because I don't get as much time as I used to or want to to work on these things but we'll get it straightened out get the front end back together get the bits and pieces of paintwork done hopefully get the coding done for the uh, clocks get it MOT'd and then give it a good uh, good clean up inside and uh, make a start on the actual conversion so other projects that are in the pipeline is in the corner there is a Range Rover Classic this is a 95 soft dash Range Rover Classic 300 TDI with a manual five speed box again quite a rare car these days um, and worth good money when they're done but this one needs an awful lot of welding this was bought before the van um, but needs so much work doing to it it's gonna have to wait until after the van is done um, but that will be probably the next project after the van is done so you'll see that one after we've finished and then down in the bottom of the garden there is two garages the little Jeep uh, Mitsubishi uh, pit in is uh, something I built years ago to have a bit of fun off-roading it's not really on the road at the moment may put it back on the road don't know yet two garages is two more projects which you will see during the course of building this one and uh, they're also gonna have to have work one one's a complete rebuild project the other one will need will probably be more of a rolling project but uh, i'll keep them as a surprise for later generally that's about it so if you're interested in this type of thing please like and subscribe if you can it doesn't really cost anything for you to do but it really makes a big difference to the channels and not just my channel anybody's channel if you like the content just press the like button it just helps with the algorithms algorithms let me can't even say it and uh, helps to get the channels promoted get people watching so 
next video we'll be making a start on um, probably just cleaning out the van getting rid of all the rubbish in the back of it part of pulling off this front end the radiator supports radiators and the front bumper and uh, having a better assess of the damage so hopefully you'll be able to join me for that if you're interested and uh, thank you very much for watching Ta -da.